We are in the month of June. As I love to say, the month of man. The sixth day walk of God after God has created everything that needed to be for the comfort of man in mercy and favor and by grace, he made man in his own image. And that's what legitimates us to rule over everything he created. Every creature of God could have been qualified to rule. Of course, the moon is ruling in his own sphere. The sun is ruling in his own sphere. The lion is ruling in the jungle. But God now wants somebody to take over every authority in heaven, on earth, in the sky, down in the sea. He now invested that power into his creature that he made in his own image. The book of Genesis, it said, rule and have dominion over the birds of the air, over the ones on the ground, over the one in the sea. And on this sixth day that God created man, we're now in the sixth month of the year. I want you to continue to pray for one prayer. Lord, let your mercy speak for me. Please don't stop it throughout this month. Begin to ask for the mercy of God. It's not by strength. It's not by power. It's not by energy. It's not by who you know. It's not by what you can achieve by your effort. It's by the mercy of God. Let that be a prayer. As a church, as individual, Lord, have mercy on me and let your mercy speak for me. In some Christian cycle, they believe you only need mercy when you have committed sin. And that's when you come before God and say, Lord, I don't qualify, but let mercy speak. No, it's not just when you find yourself out of order, but even as a righteous being, we need the mercy of God. Moses was righteous before God. And when God spoke to him about showing him his presence to go with him in Exodus 33. He reminded God, you say, I've obtained mercy with you. Why is it you've not shown me who will go with me? Because he obtained mercy. God said, my presence will go with you and that will give you rest. If you must rest in this month of the day of man, the sixth month, if you must continue to enjoy the rest of God for the rest of the year until Christ will tarry and come, You need the mercy of God. When mercy speaks for you, you enjoy the benefit of Solomon in his early days. The Bible says his father fought war all his life. But when it came to the time of Solomon, God surrounded him with peace all over that he did not fight one war. The mercy of God. And I pray that as we continue to ask for the mercy of God, May that be our portion in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we pray again tonight as we gather that you will open our understanding, you give us your revelation, that you give us the act of doing, that you work your work out in us and you will make us to be an obedient children. We pray, oh God, that you will grow us in the knowledge of your wisdom, that the impartation you will give tonight to as many that we hear will become a life inheritance that we will take to be all that you want us to be. I bind every satanic move. I come against every territorial spirit. I declare the light of God to shine. I rule out darkness. And I say, Holy Spirit, take control, bypass me, and speak to our heart. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you are about to do. And many more you are going to do. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Welcome to Christ Shalom Bible Center, Christ Miracle Evangelical Ministry. I want to continue in the teaching of the word of God. Whose kingdom are you? Whose kingdom am I? If God's give me the grace tonight, I will finish. If not, I think I may have one more to go. Open your Bible with many of you can to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Why are we studying whose kingdom we are? The Bible says, examine yourself. Examination yourself. You see, every student have been examined. There used to be a time and in some cycle, particularly younger ones, they would not allow them to do examination in their homes. 
So they gathered them at the center under a close watch of an invigilator. They said, we don't want you to shit. They will prohibit some things. You cannot bring calculator that has something written in them. You can't bring this. You can't bring that. But you know what? They will examine you. That examination leads to promotion. But in some examinations, as you grow matured in life, you examine yourself. There have been some examinations you do. It could be an assignment. You do it and they say, mark yourself. Because you are trusted that you will do it fairly, squarely, and rightly. In similar format, as believers, at every occasion and on every timing, God is requiring you and I on this journey of eternity to examine ourselves. Why? Because it's very easy for somebody that started well to have the camp. The Bible talks about some people whose faith were shipwrecked. The like of Judas started well. The Bible even recorded in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 1, Peter said he was counted among us, but he departed, which means people can depart. He was counted among us. That is why they now have to appoint Matthias to take over what is bishopry. He was counted to be one of the bishoprics, but he departed. And the Bible is telling us today, examination is a key. For you to continue to know whose kingdom you are. There are some people that started well that might think they are making heaven and at their last minute they make themselves in hellfire. And there are some people that have not started at all. And at the last minute, like the thief on the cross, mercy will find them and they will find themselves in the kingdom. I remember Paul was saying the same word. He said, I am taking caution so that at the last time after I preach to you, you make heaven. And I become a cast out. Examine ourselves. I read verse 5. Examine yourself. Whether ye be in the faith. Whether ye be in the faith. The Bible goes further to say, Prove your own self. Know you not your own self. How that Jesus is in you. Except ye be reprobate. And that is what we have been studying for a couple of weeks. Examining ourselves as to whose kingdom we are. We have been able to look over the months past that there are two kingdoms that is running side by side. There is the original kingdom of God and there is a fake pseudo so-called kingdom of Satan. Even Christ acknowledged that he has a kingdom. He said, the prince of this world come to me and he find nothing in me. There will be no prince without a kingdom. So Christ admitted that for Satan to be a prince, he has a kingdom. And where is this kingdom? This world. When Christ was here, he kept telling everybody that cared to listen. He said, my kingdom is not of of this world. Whose kingdom are you? We've looked at different dimensions. We started by looking at the nature of the kingdom. Under the nation of the kingdom, we look at the rulership of that kingdom I wouldn't want to go over this because of time. We have the clip in different written format, audio that we can refer to on YouTube, on Facebook. Um, I just want to move on. Rulership. We said in the kingdom of God, God rules. In the kingdom of Satan, is ruled by the Satan. We said God ruled through his own son. We said in the kingdom of Satan, Satan ruled through demonic forces. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, it began to talk about those that rule with Satan. He said, but we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Those are the ones that rule with Satan. And they are stationed in the second heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 stated further. He said, the spirit of the air that controls the heart of the children of disobedience. We say in the kingdom of God, God rules and he rules by his son. We also further say in that kingdom of God, it is the Holy Spirit that is the power of the kingdom. And in that kingdom of God, now you and I as a believer, we are part of the rulership of that kingdom. No wonder the Bible says you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. We now went further to look at another dimension under the rulership of the kingdom, we look at character of the kingdom. We say one of the character of God's kingdom is righteousness. It is peace, it is joy in the Holy Ghost. According to Romans chapter 14, verse 17, 
But in the kingdom of Satan, it is self-centered. It is self-centered and it's centered on wickedness. There are Bible verses that we gave to that. We went further to look at another character of God's kingdom. We said in the kingdom of God, there is truth. Why in the kingdom of Satan, there is deceptions and lies. We went further to say, under the character of the kingdom of God, there is holiness. So if I claim I am a believer, I am a Christian, I am going to heaven, and I do not walk in God's kind of holiness, then I need to be asking myself, am I still in the kingdom of God? Holiness is a characteristic of God's kingdom. Why in the kingdom of darkness, there is sin and evil? We went further over the weeks to look at another characteristic of God's kingdom. We say light is part of the characteristics of the kingdom of God, whereas darkness characterizes the kingdom of Satan. Another one we look at is eternal life. We said in the kingdom of God, we aim and walk towards eternal life. And Christ said it, I am the way. If I must make eternal life, I must be on the way, the way. Christ is the way. And as I'm on the way, which we found by salvation. John chapter 3 verse 3, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom. When you are born again, you see because you are on the way, on the way to eternity. He said, that way you begin to discover my truth. Too many people that claim they have the truth of God, if they are not genuinely saved, what they have is deception and lies. You cannot discover Christ's truth until you have entered his way. Let me repeat it. If you want to, if you want to, you want to be a student, I'm not talking about the open school university now. You want to be a student of Oxford University. You want to be a student of South Bank University. You want to be a student of Cambridge University. Mention some university. You want to be a student of Kent University. You want to be a student like the school I went, Westminster University. And you are not resident in the United Kingdom. You've not set your feet in the United Kingdom. And you are telling people in any nation of the world you are outside the United Kingdom. I am a, an undergraduate of Soso University. And somebody asked me, is it, are you doing it online? You say, no, I'm physically in the school. I am a member of the school. Every semester, I attend classes. And say, are you in the United Kingdom? Say, no, I don't, I've never been to United Kingdom before. And you are not doing open learning online. No. So how do you do yours? I am in the school. I am a member of the school. Last week, even this morning, I have just finished my lecture from the, you know, the, this, the lecture room. But have you been to UK before? No. That is not possible. You cannot claim to be part of a school where you physically attended without being part of that country. So there's no way. Anybody can claim they have the truth of God, except they have entered the way called Christ. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. When you enter the way called Christ by salvation, you will discover the truth on the way. And that as you continue to be set free by this truth, as you relate with the truth of God, as you become the truth of God, as you unite with the truth of God, it will pilot you into eternal life. So there is eternal life in the kingdom of God where there is eternal death in the kingdom of Satan. We now go further to manifestation of that kingdom. We begin to look at how the kingdom manifested. And we mentioned some things. We said there are miracles. There are miracles in the kingdom of God. Miracle manifested. We went further to begin to look in the kingdom of darkness. They are what we call wonders. They are not God's miracle. They are wonders. So Satan too can perform wonders. They can perform magic. And they will tell you God is working. And because people that do not know the word of God, they get confused. What they are looking for is, ah, since I met the man of God, my life changed. I don't have money before. Now I have money. But do you ask yourself, the source of where the money comes from? Could it be occultism? Could it be one spirit somewhere in the depth of the sea that the man or woman of God is using to activate whatever he's doing that you call miracles? But they are not miracles. They are just magic. In the kingdom of Satan, there are wonders. 
there are magic. Why in the kingdom of God there are miracles? Miracles and testimony is only what God alone can do. Whereas the lesser ones that I call the fake manifestation are what the devil does for his people. We went further, we said that in the kingdom of God, there is the gift of the Holy Spirit. But in the kingdom of Satan, there is sorcery. Don't even be surprised these days that they have their own tongue. They can blow a form of tongue, but it denies the power and the glory of God. In the kingdom of God, there is the fruit of life. There is the fruit of the Spirit. According to Galatians chapter 5, from verse 23, I believe. But in the kingdom of God, there are the carnality expulsion. There is the act of the sinful nature. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Then last week or last month, we begin to look at the people of each kingdom. You need to know the kind of person you are. When somebody comes to you and say, I'm a British. What you expect them to show is their passport. When somebody say, I'm an American, you expect them to have an American passport. Somebody say, I'm a Nigerian, you expect them to show you a Nigerian passport. Somebody say, I'm from Ghana, I'm a Ghanaian citizen. They will show you a Ghanaian passport. The people of both kingdoms also have their passports. And that is what we've been looking. And you are examining yourself as I'm examining myself. Whose kingdom am I? Now, the people of this kingdom will start looking into how they enter. Every student that claims I'm an undergraduate of a school must know the admission process. You saw somebody that said, I'm a student of social university. I said, how do you enter the university? He said, well, I just woke up one day, carried my book, and I just went there, and I saw the gate open, and I attended the class, and from that day, that's how I'm a student. You that is a true bona fide student of this school, say, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. So what do you mean? Do you apply for what? Apply for admission? No, I didn't do that. Do you receive unconditional or conditional offer? No, I didn't do that. Do you go for matriculation? No, I didn't do that. You just believe you are. Do you attend the registry? No, I didn't do that. Do you pay for your premiums? Your school fees? He said, no, I didn't do that. I just went, the gate was open, and I entered the class, and I'm a student. It doesn't work like that. The people of the kingdom, for the kingdom of God, they have an entrance into the kingdom. We look at that, that the entrance into the kingdom of God is repentance. It starts with repentance and forgiveness. As a matter of fact, if I, if I must include it means they repented and they were converted and they were forgiven. Repentance and conversion is the part that man do with the help of the Holy Spirit. Why forgiveness is the part that God do for those that have genuinely repented and they were converted. Repentance is, I don't want to do this thing anymore. Conversion is 360 degree turning. From the thing you don't want to do anymore. And forgiveness we follow. Jesus spoke somewhere in the Bible. He said because they were not converted. Their sins were not forgiven. And it's a requirement that as you repented. You accept Jesus into your life. You get converted. What follows? Forgiveness and a new life. All this by the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Here it is. Judas Iscariot repented, but he was not converted. His repentance is what the Bible calls worldly sorrow. There was worldly sorrow in the heart of Judas. The Bible says he leads to death. You can see the reason why he committed suicide. But Peter, in his own case, the Bible says he wept bitterly. He did not only repented, he was converted. And that is why you never see Peter deny Christ again. Even at the point of death, when they say, we are going to nail you to the cross, he said, make it more difficult. Make it harder. I cannot, he was so humble enough to say, I cannot share the same death pattern with my master. My master was hung on the cross, hung me upside down. Which one is tougher? Which one is harder? Not in any way diminishing the death of Christ, our master, but the one that they turned Peter upside down, you can imagine the blood from the feet coming to his nostril. Everything upside down within a few minutes. That was a tougher one. 
he has the opportunity to deny him again. But he never did. Why? Because he did not only repent, he was genuinely converted. And as a result, forgiveness was issued. In the kingdom of Satan, you don't need to do anything to become a member. You don't need to do anything to become a citizen of the kingdom of darkness. We were all born into it. For the fact that you were born human, following the fall of Adam and Eve, you are already part of the kingdom of Satan. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of what? Of the glory of God. So you don't need to do anything. Let me give another example. If you must become a graduate, you must do some things. If you must stay an illiterate, uneducated, a person that have never gone to school, you don't need to do anything. Just stay on your level and keep on wiring away time. You are growing older. And when you reach 60, 70, 80, they say, what was your qualification in life? Say, I didn't go to school. I didn't have any degree. Why? Because you do nothing. But a person that start bringing their degree, I have first degree, I have master's, I have postgraduate diploma, I have PhD, or I even go for professorship. They were doing something. You don't need to do anything to be part of the kingdom of Satan because we were born into it. Following the death, the, the fall of man in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, that moment is what every man inherited the blood of sin. David said, in iniquity did my mother, what? Begot me. You say, what about the good ones? What about those that are naturally good? They are so good, they are very helpful to everybody. Hear what the Bible says. He said, there is no good man. All our righteousness is like what? A filthy rag before God. But the moment you hear about the death and the resurrection of Christ, and you accepted Jesus into your life, your journey from the power of darkness into the marvelous light of his son began. And the Bible says, now walk the walk of your salvation with fear and trembling. What walk? With the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to lead you from a babe, a child of God, growing unto maturity, becoming a son of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many that are being led by the Spirit of God, they are what? They are the sons of God. Examine yourself whether you are still in faith. Whose kingdom am I? When I went to the entrance into the kingdom, we said there is a narrow gate where every true believer must go through to become a believer of Christ. A narrow gate. We read from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 24 to 28. But for the kingdom of darkness, it's a wide gate. The Bible call it a broad gate. A broad gate. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. Everybody can enter it. Homosexual can enter it. Fornicator can enter it. Lesbian can enter it. It doesn't matter what you call yourself. You can claim to be a Christian. And you say your God is a God of love. But the God I serve is not a God that, tol that loves sin. He loves you as a person. But he cannot stand sin. Even his own son that didn't commit sin. The Bible says when Jesus was on the cross. Carrying the sin of the old world. God had to turn his face away from him. And Christ had to shout. Eli, Eli, laba satani. My God, my God. Why are you forsaking me? God was not forsaking Jesus. But he cannot behold sin. And now that Christ is carrying the sin of the world far away. So that judgment can be on him for the sins of the world. He chose to carry because of love for us. God turned away from him. God loved mankind, but God hates sin. One thing that God hates most in life is sin. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Which gate have you entered? Now let me go into a few teachings of today. The persons of the kingdom of Christ, they have what we call the spirit of God, humility as produced by the Holy Spirit. Open your Bible with me if you can to Matthew chapter 18. Let's study the Bible now. Matthew chapter 18. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 18. And I want to read to you verse 3 to 4. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 to 4. Let me quickly say this. Why is it we come to fellowship? It's a proper church is a school of the Bible. I will repeat this. It's because 
what some people that are not knowledgeable, spiritually knowledgeable, believe they are waiting for is the rapture. Many will leave church when they realize that they have been deceived. The rapture will not come until the Antichrist has finished his assignment. You will be here. God will not take anybody to heaven to escape the Antichrist. Find the time to read the Bible. Matthew 24 made it clear. When you get to verse 29 and 30, Christ said, after the great tribulations of those days, he said, when he got to a point, he said, he will send his angel, I'm talking from verse 30 now, to go to the four corners of the earth. Four corners of the earth include Africa, include China, include America, Include Dubai, every nation of the earth. The trumpet will be blown, and then we will gather the elect. Some Bible call it the saints of God. That is the rapture, but first the tribulation. Find time to read Second Thessalonians chapter two, from verse one. Then you will understand again. Paul re-emphasizing the same thing that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ will not happen until the man of sin has first been released. And that man of sin will sit on the throne of God, throne in the temple of God, claiming to be God. Only then the rapture will happen. The mark of the beast will happen. COVID-19 was a trial run. The person that will do the assignment is already born. We don't know where the person is. The devil will release his power into him with a false prophet supporting him. They will call fire down. If you don't know your God by now, you are wasting resources. A time will come that a true believer will have to pay some prices. And God is preparing his soldiers now. He's preparing you and I for the events that lies ahead. The Bible even says, if God not in mercy have caught the day short, nobody will be able to go through. So that is one of the reasons why we come to church. To go to a true church. A church where the truth is being spoken without any lies, without any deception, Time is short. Every good student will prepare for examination. Every good teacher will prepare their student for an examination they cannot run from. Once your date is set for your exam, don't pray the dates away because it cannot escape. It will happen. That day will come. Ready or not, here I come. But you could prepare for that day. You could enter that day and come out the other side and begin to jubilate. That is what I pray will happen. As we take time in the word of God together, go with me into um, people of the kingdom, how, you know, the things that they must do to enter. Humility is one thing that we receive to prove we are in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and I want to read verse 3 to 4. And I read and said, verily, I said unto you. Verily, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into where? Into the kingdom of heaven. See that word being repeated again. Conversion. Repentance is not good enough. You must repent, but you must be converted. Too many believers are repenting and they are doing it day by day. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. And every day you are doing the same thing. We are not different to a child that is 22 years but cannot walk. He's still wetting himself. He's still pulling upon himself. He's behaving as if he's two years old. Then that means there are some disabilities. Serious disability. Some believers have a lot of spiritual disability. God is saying it's not that you are not repenting, but you are not converted. When you are converted... The things of yesterday will not fall you so easily. Conversion is a power released by the Holy Spirit when you have repented genuinely. When the Holy Spirit knows you meant it, then the word of God will come true for you. That said, now sin shall no longer have dominion over you. If there are some hidden sins that is still dominating us and we are living in hypocrisy, pretending to be righteous before man, but in the hidden places, God is washing. The spirit of Joseph must be in us. There is nowhere to hide from God. People play church. Ah, daddy must not hear. Mommy must not hear. And fellow choirs must not hear. 
Brother, this must not hear. Sister, this must not hear. Pastor must not hear. But they fail to realize that there is nowhere the eyes of God is not. That eyes is bigger than the people you are fearing. There is nowhere Satan cannot see. He knows his own. The Bible told me about the seven signs of Kaifa. They went to go and do deliverance. And the demon spirit responded. He said, Jesus, I know. He said, Paul, I know. Why? Because they belong to the kingdom of God. He said, who are you? When you have no identity in Christ Jesus, the demons know. If you are not converted and you continue to live a double life, the demons know. To people that are truly converted, they bear upon them the mark of the Lord Jesus. And no wonder no one can trouble them. The Bible says, And verily I said unto you, Except ye be converted and become as a little child. What does that signify? Humility. A little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of God. I was speaking to a man that came to my house to assist on something a couple of days ago. And the Lord said I should preach to him. And I was telling him, I said, One thing is certain in life, we will all live here one day. Either way. Whichever way you go and whichever time you go, whether you are going to be 5,000 years here, you will leave. Whether you are going to be 300 years, you will leave. The key, therefore, is where am I going after death? A good person that travels to any part of the world, you prepare yourself. You book your hotel. If you love driving, you book your car. You check the city you are going you make sure your booking comprises of the time you will spend there with the food you will eat. You take extra cash should in case anything happen. Human were so wise to prepare for a journey of few days, few weeks, that they know they are returning back. But people are not preparing for eternity where you will not come back. And there is only two eternities. I don't care what religious said because I'm not a religion person. I believe the Bible squarely. Because it has never lied. The Bible has been truthful from beginning to the end. And that Bible told us that after death, the judgment, there is hellfire, there is heaven. People of the kingdom of God who has truly been converted, who has followed the Holy Spirit, they have secured for themselves eternity with God. Where there shall be no lack, no pain. When they live here, even while they are here, heaven will be settled in their hearts. They will be sealed by the Holy Spirit. The joy of God will be on them. Whereas people that live in sin, that walk in hypocrisy, they are walking themselves into hell. I will repeat this. If you miss heaven, you cannot miss hell. If you miss heaven, you cannot miss hell. And nobody enter hell that have the chance to come out again. If you think any part of the time on earth is painful, is difficult, is challenging, is hard, go and see people that right now are in hellfire. It is a place of torment for life. May that not be our portion in the name of the Lord Jesus. To enter the kingdom, humility is the key. Verse 4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest, in the kingdom of heaven. So there are, there are levels in God's kingdom. There are levels in God's kingdom. There will be those that will enter, but they are low. And there will be those that are greatest when they enter heaven. Just like in the world we are now. There are some people you look at, they are the big gates of this generation. Mention their name. They have the money. So when they are calling their name, they say these are the billionaire class. And there are some people that they are the lowest spectrum of the society. They do not have anything to feed on. They have no accounts to themselves. They are poor. The same way in heaven, there will be people that are low. And there will be people that are greater. Christ said it here. One of the lowest in heaven because of lack of humility and obedience and trust and walking by faith is called John the Baptist. Oh, is that strange to you to hear? Jesus said it. He said, who have you come to look at in the wilderness? He said, John, a prophet? He said, I'm telling you, it's more than a prophet. He said, but I tell you, in the kingdom. He said, the lowest in the kingdom shall be greater than John the Baptist. Don't let that be a consolation to you. Run your race. Attain to be the greatest. When you are in a school, 
You don't console yourself with 40%. And say, after all, I'm not the last in the class. You don't console yourself with getting 60. And after all, I get credit. No. You aspire to be the number one in the class. You want to be the top of the class. The same way with the spiritual race we are running. I read that verse again to you. Verse 4 of the book of Matthew chapter 18. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. A life of humility. And the humility God is talking about here is not the one you do by your own effort. The arms of flesh will fail you. The humility that the Bible is talking about here is mentioned in Galatians chapter 15, chapter 5, from verse 22. The fruits of the Spirit, as you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit, following your salvation, and you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you day by day. You spend time in the Word of God. It's time to come to fellowship where the truth of the Word has been preached. You came. And you came with a heart, I want to be blessed. I want to learn. You know, there are times uh, people go to church with arrogancy mind. Some go to church, I just want to be there. It's like a student that goes to a school and is just there to wear away time. He's not there to listen to the teacher. He doesn't care what the teacher says. If I'm not here, they will say I'm not serious. But at least let them know I'm here. But when they finish the class, they say, do you understand what the teacher taught? Say, I do not have a clue. If that is the life we are living a life of God, you can do whatever you like. I don't care. How can we be the greatest in the kingdom? He said, those that will be the greatest in the kingdom must have humility like a child. The humility of God. The spiritual humility that the Holy Spirit alone can produce in the inside of us. In the kingdom of Satan, there is pride. There is arrogancy. Go with me if you can. Second Timothy chapter 3. I want to read verse 2, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm reading verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, I read verse 2. And I read, for men shall be lovers of their own self. That is in the kingdom of Satan. The only thing they love in the worldly system is themselves. They don't love any other person. When they tell you, I love you, can I digress a little bit? You are a woman, you are looking for an husband, and they came to you and they say, I love you. If they are worldly, that love is conditional. They don't love you, they just want to use you. And once they have destroyed your life, they move on to the next victim. That is not the love we are talking about here. Lovers of self. Lovers of self. The Bible says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. They will be selfish lover. They only care about themselves. Then they will be conversious. They will be bolster. They will be proud. In the kingdom of darkness, it's nothing about God. Whenever they want to say anything, it's not if God's will. They don't believe in God's will. They will tell you if I can, if I can do the right thing, if I can put my head down, if nothing is impossible for me to do, hear me, hear me well. Pride is a sign of the kingdom of darkness. The Bible spoke about that man who was so proud. He said, my soul, see what you have acquired. He said, now build a barn, eat, enjoy, and do merry. Then the voice came. He said, oh, you foolish man. He said, today your soul shall be demanded of you. You will leave this earth. Now let's now see. Unto who all these things you have gathered together we belong. The journey to this world, I don't know how it began. I just saw myself here in consciousness. The journey of you being here, you don't know how it began. Your father, your mother cannot even explain it. Until one day, mommy says, I'm pregnant. That is all. But the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, why you are in your mother's womb? Before your mommy or your daddy even see your face. Before scanning started. He said, I know you and I have called you by your name. That is a God that is demanding us to be humble in the journey of life while you are here. Don't count on your ability. Count on God. Don't just speak vanity words. Count on God. And counting on God is not just what we say. It's how we act. It's how we think. It's how we speak. It's us waiting for God. A person that is pride. Proud. They don't wait for God. 
everything they want to do, they use their effort, they use their ability. That is a symptom of somebody in the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says they were blasphemers in the kingdom of darkness. They are disobedient to parents in the kingdom of darkness. They are unthankful. They are unholy. They are without natural affection. They are truth breaker. They are false accusers. They are incontinent. They are fiends. The despiser of those things that are good. They are traitors. They are very heady. It means they cannot be corrected. They don't believe in anybody telling them what to do. He said they are high-minded. A 10, 20 years old young man or woman that want to have a plane. How? If care is not taken, you will become a robber. Wait for your time. I have came to realize, uh, me and mommy were reading today Psalm 127. It said, except the Lord build the house, the laborers labored in vain. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman wake in vain. Does that mean you must not plan? Plan with God. Does that mean you must not have dreams? Have dreams. Does that mean you must not walk towards it? Of course, yes. But the Bible says, do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways, first and foremost, always acknowledge God. Let him be the first person you relate with. When David was to go to battle, he first called unto his father in heaven. He said, should I go? Will I recover if I pursue? Should I go? Should I pursue? Will I recover? Let me repeat those three words. Should I go? Number one. Will I recover? Number two. Should, should I go? Should I pursue? Number two. And will I recover? And God said, go and wait at a point. He said, it will get to a point you will see the trees moving. When you see the tree moving where you are waiting, know that my angels has gone ahead of you. And then you can go and then you will recover. And he got to the place where God said he should wait. He went under the tree. And he was looking for the sign of God going ahead. No wonder the Bible says, I will send my angels to go ahead of you. To make the crooked path straighten. If you are doing it on your own, you will struggle through life. By the time if by accident you manage to even make it happen, you will not have the peace of mind to enjoy it. Because it's one thing you acquire. It's more work. To maintain it. Let me repeat. It's one thing to fight to acquire. Life has taught me a lesson that is even a greater work to maintain what you acquire. But when God has acquired it for you, you will speak like David. It is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our sight. Because it is God that acquired it, the signature of God is on it, the mark of God is on it, God will see to it and maintain it because his glory is attached to it. If you continue to stick with God. Is that not what he told the like of Solomon? He said, Solomon, you didn't ask for money. You didn't ask for wealth. You asked for wisdom. Okay? Because you do not ask me for all those natural material things. I am going to give them to you. I will also give you wisdom that you ask for. To lead the people. Who is wisdom? The Lord Jesus Christ. That is wisdom. So he was asking for Christ. He was saying, Christ, fill me up. And the Bible told me somewhere else, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added unto you. He was asking for the kingdom. And when you ask for the right thing, God said, He will add to you. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Now take it to another level. He said, If you now seek me with all your heart, if you continue in this way, you've started with the way of your father. I will now add to you the final crown. What was it? Long life. I will add long life to your life. Unfortunately, the Bible says several women, the wrong women, the wrong association, the crowd, the worldly people that Solomon attracted himself and surrounded himself with, they took his heart away. From the God of his father. No wonder Solomon died at 60 years old. He died prematurely. He didn't die in old age. A man that have everything for him. The Bible says he got everything he wanted in life. Plus peace. His father fought war all his life. But God surrounded Solomon with peace in all his surrounding. Do you know in spite of all that. 
He deviated from serving God. He was worshipping idols with his wife of Egypt. Every wife he took from every foreign land, they brought their idols. And Solomon was in the forefront of it. He was building temple for them. And no wonder he died a miserable life. One of the messages he wrote for us as a book, this is how he ended it. He said, vanity upon vanity. All is what? All is vanity. In the kingdom of darkness, there are traitors. There are elder, edgy people. There are high-minded people. There are lovers of pleasure. How often do you fast? You claim you are a Christian, yes. How regularly do you fast and pray? You want to get to where great men and great women get to in the Bible. Do you know the sacrifices they've done? Jesus said, this kind of thing cannot go except by prayer and fasting. You can't pray. You can't fast. You are like a blind bat. You thought the world is just the way it is. Don't be deceived. The battle of life is not being done in the physical. It's been done in the realm of the spirit. When you win in the spiritual realm, it's a matter of time. It will transform into the physical realm. A battle you have not won in the spiritual realm is a battle you will continue to fight over and over, even in the physical realm. We must know how to do away with pleasure. When you are a Christian, pleasure life is not the key anymore. You must know how to cut something off. I begin to grow to realize something. Even in the secular world now, they said, you want to lose weight? You want to look trim? You don't want to have sickness in your body? Do you know most of them are not talking about gym anymore? They now begin to talk about fasting, intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting. They say, you know what? When you eat yesterday around 6, don't eat the next one until about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That is good, but that is not for believers. Because when you fast without prayer, those mountains will not move. Jesus said, this kind of thing cannot move except by prayer and fasting. A believer must fast. Those that love pleasure more than they love God, fasting is never in their mind. Oh, they don't believe in the inconveniency of studying the word. They don't believe in the inconveniency of prayer time. They will never do night vigil. But they can watch film for four hours, six hours, all night. But tell them to talk to God of heaven that can open door for them. They said no. They want miracles from God. But they are not ready to pay the prices. Is that who we are? Whose kingdom are you? They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof from such, the Bible says, turn away. What is form of godliness? They may speak in tongue, but the power has been denied. They may tell you they are Christians, but they don't live the life of Christ. They may tell you we go to church, my name is Christiana, but they do not live like Christ. They have a form of godliness. They can be so religious, but they are not making their way to heaven. Whose kingdom are we? Time is gone, and I am going to stop. I thought I would finish today, but it seems it's not possible. God has a purpose for this, and by God's grace, next month, I will continue in this teaching. Let us pray. Father, we bless you for what you've done for us. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for you are teaching us daily to become more established, rooted in your kingdom. So that the enemy will not move us. So that the power of darkness will not break us. So that we will not be taken into deceptions and lies that will be emmas in this end time. So that we can continue to be led by the Holy Spirit. So that our words, our actions and our behavior will show that we are truly in you. We pray that the word you have spoken to us today will become a rema in us. Lord, help us so that we will think on it. We will meditate on it. We will become this world. We will make a real choice to become what you want us to be. We know there will be persecution. There will be opposition. But root us in you, Lord Jesus. Help us to continue in this way to eternity. Thank you, Father, for all you've done tonight and for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. I believe the Lord has blessed you as he has blessed me. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the kingdom of Christ that God has brought to us by the death and the resurrection of the Christ Jesus and the enforcement by the Holy Spirit. May that continually be our priority. May our feet not depart from this way of truth. 
I encourage you, if by any chance this often seems strange to you, or you are still playing church and doing religion, and you have not come into this way called Christ, this is your opportunity. Accept Jesus as your Savior, accept Him as your Lord, and be led by the Holy Spirit so that you can have an assurance of eternity, so that you too can say, I belong to Christ. I don't belong to the world. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. My name is Apostle Prophet Dr. Martin Betaya, Christ Shalom Bible Center. God bless you indeed. Shalom, shalom.